When you have an, uh, an, epilepsy, an epilepsy seizure in Africa, you are completely excluded from the community because it's so, for the people, you have the devil in your body, you are bewitched and, and, and they are afraid. You imagine what we have to do? First, it's not the problem of drugs. It's just to explain to the people, this is a disease. And this is his disease is manageable. And after you can bring drugs. And the cost is nothing. You know how much it costs to treat a patient for one year with epilepsy or even with chronic psychosis? Six US dollars per year, only the treatment. And around eight for a schizophrenic patient with long-acting neuroleptics. The, and we have the technique, but no human resources, no political willingness. That's it. It's why advocacy is very important. To advocate and to say, to explain. And now we say, we have to do something. And we have, in my department, two programs on this one. But when I, I told you we, we want to change the business model, what we have decided for malaria, for example, for the same product, and we make a development of product, I don't want to be too much scientific, but a development for the same product, we have two brand names, two packaging, two prices. Same product, same quality, same place of fabrication. One is for private market. In Africa, you have some people in the big cities, they can pay with a brand name, one box, one blister, three days treatment for malaria crisis. But for public market, with a price around seven US. And for the public market, big box, 25, through tender, through the global fund, through WHO. So another brand name, and the price is less than one US for three days treatment for adults, less than 50 cents for children. We can, we can make things like that, but not only for this type of disease. And my department is a pilot one to show how to manage, how to do something sustainable in developing country to, 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 to treat the patient, because you have also diabetes. I don't speak about diabetes, but you have a lot of diabetes in India. Not only rich people, you have 80 million people in India with diabetes, with diabetes, much more in China. And don't speak about the richest part of the population. We have to be aware about that. And, and pharma industry has a responsibility, not the full responsibility, but one of the responsibility. And uh, beyond, beyond the problem, and, and I think we are on the heart of, of, of the thema of this access to medicine policy, we have to maintain employment in the South. This is, it's nice to say, okay, we have to bring drugs to manufacture, to, to, but what about employment? How we, we, our responsibility is also to increase the middle class in the country. And our policy in my department is, okay, all our compounds we will manufacture in developing countries. Malaria is in Morocco, developing or emerging. Uh, Leishmaniasis in Brazil, in our plant in Susano. TB in South Africa. And we maintain employment. And now the production of our product against malaria is 30% of the activity of our plant in Morocco. Okay, our policy is no profit, no loss. We don't win, we don't lose. But we maintain employment and everything, all the fixed costs are, are paid. But also when you conduct such a policy, you are not only a provider of drugs, doing profit and chow. You are a partner of public health. And you bring some solution because, okay, we can bring drugs, but drug alone is not enough. It's not enough at all. The med medicines and drugs is a small part of the solution. I will give you, I, I will give tomorrow in Africa all the antiretroviral drugs free you are not going to solve the problem of AIDS in Africa. What about human resources? What about information education? What about the control in terms of biology, in terms of tests? I take, I take TB, tuberculosis. Malaria, three days treatment is quite easy. TB, six months. You have to treat a patient for TB, six months. During the two first months, four products. Rifampicin, isoniazid, etambutol, pirazinamide. If you, have, if you don't have fixed dose combination, you have to take 22 pills per day. 
Okay, perhaps easy here in New Jersey. When you are in a village in Africa, 22 pills per day during two months and 12 during four months, very, very difficult. Okay, first challenge to make fixed dose combination is done. But the second point is to be sure that the patient will take the drug every day. The compliance is a key concern about TB. Why? Because TB, and I tell you as a medical doctor, after one month's treatment, you have no more fever, no cough, you feel very good, you stop. But you are still contagious. And you create some resistance, some strains, very resistant. It's why, and you know what is a policy by WHO and by all the actors, is to train people to go every day during six months to the patient to check if he's taken the pills. It's a DOTS policy, direct observed therapy. Just to explain you how it's complex. Drug is important, but it's not, it's need, okay, three minutes if you want. <laughs> okay, five. No, no, just to tell you that it's very important to conduct information, education, and communication. Take the example of malaria. The World Bank and all the organizations are very happy to make distribution of bed nets. You know what is bed nets? To sleep. Okay, but after some inquiry, we have seen that a lot of people that don't use uh, these bed nets, they prefer to use as a wedding dress or to fish. We well, I mean, don't smile. Why? Because they don't know the link between the mosquito and the disease. We have performed a study in the north of Cameroon, and we have seen that 70% of the mothers, they didn't know the link between the mosquito and the disease. Why they will use a bed net if they don't know the link, the responsibility of mosquito? It's why you need information, but not information very sophisticated. You have to adapt your information in all the levels, for the doctor, for the key opinion leader, for the nurses, for the health worker, till the community level, for the mother and for the children. This is, ladies and gentlemen, what I wanted to share with you. I'm perhaps uh, too quick or not enough, but I think it's very important uh, to take into account, to take into account this, uh, this situation. What is, perhaps it will be a sort of conclusion, what is the difference between human and animals? Very often we say, you know, Humans, this is the only species in the world they are killing people. They kill together. Animal will kill only for it. It's not the case for us if we see the war. But we can say that certainly values. We have the awareness of values. The only concern is how to apply these values. We agree through all the, 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 the most important religion in the world, because religion plays a very important role, we have the same value. To help the other, to be open on the other, to know. But don't forget that all the solutions, except for specific emergency case, we have to think sustainable and long term. We, all the failure, in our, and I say our, France, United States, Germany, our policy about development all around the world, much more failure than success because we're not a long-term view. It was one-shot operation. We built a university uh, or we take a lot of, uh, uh, of students uh, and they, they don't come back in their country because we didn't think in terms of sustainability, in terms of long-term, and I have many, many examples. It's why now, this world, and thank you to have chosen this world, sustainability has to be the pillar of all the policy. Thank you very much. I just wanted to acknowledge one of our board of advisor, uh, advisory members who is responsible for bringing this great leading keynote speaker to the forum. Ronnie Croucher 
uh, from Sanofi Aventus. Where is she? Thank you.